Alright, so today we're going to discuss about the paper one and yeah, this is the ML SM 2014. Yeah, it's a MX paper one. Yeah, this is two hour paper. And yeah, I I actually I got this paper from I got this paper from a website called edujoshwali.com something like that alright so but it, this is not important okay so now let's have a look on the first question over here so uh, I, I just realized some of you feel lacking but can you he hear my voice yeah before I continue my discussion you can hear my voice yeah you just can't see me I think this one is fine because yeah, the important is a white is a white whiteboard over here. Can you see what whatever, uh, whatever happens in the whiteboard? We all do know what happens earlier. Is is it now okay, or still like? Yeah, because over here he said the connection status is actually. Poor, yeah, I think you will feel very lax just now. Now can see and can and hear this. Yeah, all right. If you can see and can hear, yeah, should be fine. If you can't, if you can't see me in in the in the webcam, I think it's fine. The important is the whiteboard over here. All right. So let's start the first first question function. This is just two two mark questions, so it's very simple. First, this is x. This is f x, right? So first, he asks you, uh, state the when you you see the word state mean you no need working, okay? When you see the word state mean no need working, you can straight away write the answer. All right. So type of relation, type of relation, you only have something like one to one, or you can have one to many, or many to one. You only have like. Of course, you still got many to many lah, but then this tree is the most famous one. So in this case, you see two to one, isn't it? Do you see two to one? If two to one, this one is many to one. Yeah, this is the an answer for A. Simple. And then the second part. Okay, he says state the values of k if f x equals to uh, cos second x. So if f x equals to cos second x all right what is okay so he asked you to find the value of k right so in order to get k i'm going to choose this combination do you see 45 for x and fx i will got i will actually got k so that's mean if f45 i actually will get k all right you must get the idea how to take the value from the diagram over here all right and then then what we do next is yeah we just solve it yeah, what is our f45 means? Mean actually will be cos second 45 degree will equal to k. Then this is just 1 over sin 45 degree. You will got k. So k is just, you just press the calculator. I think you will got the value of square root 2. That's all. All right. I think some student might feel internet connection is lost. Trying to reconnect to the server. Oh my god. Alright, do you feel better right now? Yeah, because just now, yeah, I, I got some notice like internet connection is lost. Alright, so yeah, I think some students might feel B is a, a bit confused. So yeah, what i trying to say is, yeah, you must try to get the idea for this diagram because this is X, this is FX, right? So if you got something like FX equals to cos second X, so what we will do over here is the x will be 45. Do you see x is 45? Yes, yeah, so you got 45 here. So you can do the testing like if I take the 30 degree, I should got 2. So you can do something like f30 actually will equals to 1 over sine 30 degree, right? 
1 over sine 30 degree is 1 over 1 over 2. So my answer will be 2. So you can find out actually I got 2 here. If I put a 30 degree, I will got 2 here. This is the same meaning if I put a 45 degree, I will got K. Alright, so you, the question just asks you to find K. It's just one mark question. We shouldn't like spend too much time on it. Many to one relation, yes. Yes, so this one is the answer for B. Alright, so K equal to square root 2. Alright, let me just move on. Okay, this one is a second one. This is function also. Alright, in this case, it actually gives you gx equals to 2 over x minus 1. And then he gives you fgx equals to 3 minus 2x. Okay, we need to find fx in this case. You got two choices here. One is you substitute g inverse into gfx. The other method, which I always use, I will let gx equals to m. Alright, if I let gx equals to m, I try to see this one. Now my gx is m, right? So I just like put the bracket for gx. gx is m, right? So this is f gx, right? So I will got something like f gx is just m. gx equals to m, right? f m will equals to 3 minus 2x. So I know if I need to find fx, and uh, the, on the other side of the equation over here must be in term of m, right? Must be in term of m. Alright, but then this one is in term of x. So that means I need to find one equation like x as a subject and in term of m. So I can go from here because I got gx, right? So gx is 2 over x minus 1 or equals to m. So I make x as a subject, then I substitute into this equation. Then I should be able to get fx. So 2 over m will equals to x minus 1. So therefore x will equals to 2 over m plus 1. Do you see this one? I call it 1. Then this one, maybe I call it 2. Then I substitute 1 into 2. Into 2. So you will see something like fm will equals to 3 minus 2. My x will be 2 over m plus 1. So I just solve this one. will be three, 2 minus 4 over m minus 2. So it will just equals to 1 minus 4 over m. So this is fm, right? If this is fm, I, I want to find fx. It's very simple. Just change all the m to x. So fx will equals to 1 minus 4 over x. That's all. Alright, this is how we solve the function. When, when we got the composite function, we need to find the other one, right? I always love to use the substitution method. Alright, so far so good. Yeah, we're going to move on if you got no problem for this one. Yes, if you got problem, you just raise hand because we, we got 25 questions we need to discuss. So yeah, I need to move quite fast. Alright. For this one, it's a function also. Alright, so for this one, it asks us to f find a P and Q. So the first thing come to my mind is I need to do the comparison method. So that means I, I either make this one become F inverse or I make this one become F. Alright, so yeah, maybe I make F become F inverse will seem easier. So I will let Fx equals to Y. Inverse function, I hope all of you still remember. So p minus 5x equals to y. Yeah, so 5x will equals to p minus y. Yeah, x will equals to p minus y over 5. Alright, so obviously if you know fx equals to y, yeah, just one more step here missing. So x will equals to f inverse y. So I got the x here, right? So this is f inverse y will got p minus y over 5. Alright, so f inverse x, I will got p minus x over 5. Alright, this is the f inverse I find out from myself. Oops, sorry. And then this is the f inverse I got from the question. Do you see I got the f inverse like this? Oops. So from the question, I got the f inverse x will equals to 2 minus x over q. So I just do some comparison. But before I need to do comparison, yes, I have to like separate them. Yeah, those have x1, I put it together. So yeah, I'm going to separate this equation. 
So you will got I, like something like P over 5 minus X over 5. Alright. Then over here, you're going to see something similar. This one together with X, right? So this is X over 5. This is X over Q. So from here, I know Q equals to 5. Alright. This one is 2 here. This one is P over 5. So I know P over 5 will equals to 2. P will equals to 10. Alright. Simple enough. So you, you, so what we do over here, we do the com comparison for this one. So yeah, you just chain this the fx into the inverse function, and then you can compare with the inverse function. So when when the process of comparison, we only compare the one have x and without x. Compare comparing x, and comparing without x. Remember this one. It's, it will be so helpful for you if you remember this one. So when we do the comparing, yeah, one you comparing with x, right? So with x, this term is with, with x. And then, then you comparing without x, this one is without x. Alright, this is how, how we solve this kind of question. Alright, let me move on to number four. Alright. Number four over here, yeah, he says two alpha and two beta are the roof of the quadratic for this one. Alright, then he asks you to form the quadratic equation with alpha and beta. Alright, so first, we're going to change this one into this formula first, x squared minus sum of roof x plus product of roof equals to zero. So now my objective is to change this equation into this pattern. Alright, so you will see what I will do now is, okay, okay, I move everything to one side, plus 4x minus 7 equals to zero. And this one must be x squared, so I divide 2 for everything. So x squared, I go into like, Okay, divide 2, this one will get 2x, right? So I change to minus negative 2x. This one divide 2 will be minus 7 over 2 equals 0. So from here, I know my sum of roof is actually negative 2, all right? The x should be outside. The x should be outside here. All right, and then I know my product of roof is negative 7 over 2. All right, from the equation I got here, this is product of roof, and then this one is sum of roof. Alright, so sum of roof, my roof is 2 alpha and 2 beta, right? So 2 alpha plus 2 beta equals to negative 2. I factorize out 2. Alpha plus beta will equals to negative 2. Then alpha plus beta will equals to negative 1. Alright, this is simple. And then this is 2 alpha multiple 2 beta because they are product, right? Beta will equals to negative 7 over 2. So 4 alpha beta will equals to negative 7 over 2. So alpha and beta will equals to negative 7 over 8. Alright, then we need to form the equation with alpha and beta, right? Mean alpha plus beta, I will got negative 1. Mean alpha multiple beta, I will got negative 7 over 8. Then I just substitute into this equation. Okay, then I just do the substitution work. So just let me erase this one. Yeah, I hope it's not so not too confused for you. All right, then I just chain back to this one. So my sum of roof over here will be negative one. So negative one x. And my product of roof over here, alpha plus multiple beta will be negative seven over eight. Equals to zero. Then this one is just x squared plus x minus seven over eight equals to zero. Yes, this is my new quadratic equation. Alright, this is how we solve when we say this one is alpha and beta. So over here, I from 2 alpha, 2 beta, change to alpha, beta. So you can actually see how I change. So I no need to find out what is alpha and what is beta because it's unnecessary. And then it's just 3 marks. So you don't do too much. Because a lot of students will do the simultaneous equation and trying to find the alpha and beta and do the substitution again. You'll find out you repeat so many steps. Yes, so you just need to do like this. This one is, you see, how I from 2 alpha multiple 2 beta to become alpha multiple beta. Then I can straight away use this formula, uh, this, the value I got, substitute into my formula. Alright. Yes, you can leave your answer like this. Or if you want to multiply 8 for, for all, yeah, you can do that also. Plus 8x minus 7 equals 0. Both is the same thing. Yeah, this one is correct and this one is correct. They won't minus mark because you never multiple A. Alright. Okay, let's let's us move on to the next one. Alright. 
This one is a quadratic also. So over here, he said given that 3 is the only roof uh, of the quadratic equation. And then he asks you to find yeah, M and N. Alright, so if he says 3 is the only roof over here, so I, I know over this case, I can only get 3 as my roof. Alright, so my alpha will be 3 and my beta will be 3. Because 3 is the only roof I can get from this equation. So from here, I try to change to the format just now. This is mx squared plus nx plus 6 equals 0, right? Equals 0. So we got the formula just now. x squared minus sum of roof x plus product of roof equals to 0. Plus product of roof equals 0. So over here, of course, this one must be, I divide m for every single one. And it's why I separate, I become minus n over m x plus 6 over m equals 0. So you see, I'm trying to change this one into this pattern. Then only I do the things. So we know this one is sum of roof, isn't it? And then we know this one is product of roof, isn't it? So from here, I roughly I will get some information. So I know sum of roof means, yes, I know sum of roof will equal to negative n over m. So sum of roof will be 3 plus 3. Yeah, alpha plus beta, right? So it'll be 3 plus 3 equals to negative n over m. So basically, 6 will equal to negative n over m. So maybe I can call it m will equal to negative n over 6. This one is my first equation. And my pro product of roof is just 3 multiple 3. I will got 6 over m. So yeah, m is just, uh, yeah, this is 9, isn't it? 6 over 9, which is 2 over 3. Alright, I substitute into number 1. So m will equal to, okay, so negative 2, oops, sorry, substitute wrong place. So 2 over 3 will equal to negative n over 6. So this one, I move here, will be 2, 4, so n equals to negative 4. Alright, this is how we find m and n. So you must understand the keyword here is only loop. Alright. Yeah, and any problem for Munira? Yes, so actually it's not really hard if you understand it. Okay, let me move on to question number six. Alright, for this question for this question over here, let me uh, let, uh, let me adjust a bit. Okay. Given that the straight line okay equation does not intersect. So when I say does not intersect, first thing coming to my mind will be b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Alright, this is meaning for does not intersect. But even if it does, does not intersect, you still need to get the ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0, isn't it? So what I need to do is I need to substitute this equation into this equation, even that does not intersect. So I need to do some, some substitution work. So I met x as a subject equals to k minus y. Alright, then I call this one 1, I call this one 2, so I substitute 1 into 2. Substitute 1 into 2. So what I've got is I've actually got k minus y square plus y square equals to 18. So basically I've got k square minus 2ky plus y square plus y square equals to 18. Alright, this is this is just a bracket. I expand it. So I will got 2y square and then this one will be minus 2ky plus k square minus 18. Alright. So from here, what I will got is yeah, equals to zero. I must got my a is just two, b is just negative 2k, and my c will be k square minus 18. Alright, this is what I say is general form of the quadratic equation. So you can see this is how I get the general scope, general form as a quadratic equation. That's why I can take out a, b, and c here. Alright, then I substitute the b square minus 4ac. So b square minus 4ac with less than 0. Alright, so this is 4k square. This is minus 8k square plus 8 multiple 18. We will got 114. So plus 144. Sorry, uh, less than 0. So basically, we will got negative 4k square. I move here. 
So 4k square will equal to 144. So divide by 4, so we have got 36. So k, k square will less than 36. So from here, if k square will less than 36, yeah, we know actually, uh, sorry, it's bigger. So k will bigger than positive negative 6. If positive negative 6, so what I will do is bigger, right? So they ask you to find range of k. So basically, we got two range because it's bigger than positive negative 6, right? So k will bigger than 6 or k will less than negative 6. Yeah, you got two answer because of this diagram. Less than mean a bigger mean outside, right? So you will got 6 and negative 6. So therefore, this one, he go this direction, so k will be bigger than 6. This one, they go this direction, k will less than negative 6. Alright, this is how we do the question like this. Yes, whenever you see this one is bigger, that means you, you will not got something on the middle. Unless this is less than positive negative 6, unless, 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 I, this is just unless, huh? unless you got k is less than positive negative 6, then k should be between 6 and negative 6. Between negative 6 and 6. Alright, this is how, how we do the question like this. Must draw the diagram. Uh, this diagram is unnecessary, but then for understanding purpose, yes, you can draw it. Is, is that is the other matter? Right, so this inequality bigger or less is very important. Yeah, a lot of students it will stop their answer in this step. You will be minus half mark or one mark for without getting this one. So make sure you do it. Okay. Yeah, let me just erase some of it because they yeah, are just move on to the next part. Alright, this is I think this is indices and log together. Yeah, so yeah, let's let's do this one together. So this one yeah, I will got something like, okay, I think this is just indices, 2, 2x plus 1, and then this one is 4, right, it's 2 power of 2, and then this is 7 minus x, and then the whole thing, square root is power half. 32 is just 2 power of 5, alright, so yeah, we just solve it over here, so 2 power of 2x plus 1 will equals to, yeah, the 2 and the 2 here can cut. So it will be, yeah, 2, 7, minus x, minus 5. Because divide 2 power 5, right? So it will be minus 5. So therefore, 2x plus 1 will equal to 7 minus 5 is just 2. 2 minus x. Alright, so yeah, 3x will equal to 1. x it will equal to 1 over 3. Alright, simple. This is just indices. Do not have log and no need to do any substitution. Alright, that's all. Cancel two first. Yeah, you can cancel two first or, or you can actually multiple in. If I do not want to cancel two, okay, for this part, what I will got, I will got two, 14 minus 2x and then, yeah, the whole thing multiple one over two, isn't it? Over two power five. Then this one, you multiple in for both, you still got 7 minus x, isn't it? So it's the same thing. So you can actually, you can straight away can cancel. You can cancel the two, or you want to expand, then you cancel after that. Yeah, both is fine. But the key point, key point is you must get the idea of minus 5 here, because we divide 2 power 5. Alright, I hope I do answer the question for Nazmi. Alright, so let me move on. Number 8. Log question. So, the question asks us to solve the uh, okay, solve the question like this. So it's quite simple. This one, I got log five, five minus x. First thing you must understand this one. We cannot expand. We got no way to expand. All right, please do not like, uh, just expand something like log five over x because minus is divide. No such thing. All right, bracket inside is plus or minus. You cannot expand. Alright, this one is log x. 1 over x, I can call it x power of negative 1 because it's the same thing. Then I move the negative 1 in front. Log x, x is just give me 1. Alright, so I will got log 5. This is 5 minus x. So therefore, I move the log 5 to that side. So it will become 
5 power of negative 1. So 5 minus x will equal to 1 over 5. So x is just equal to 5 minus 1 over 5. So which is, I will got the answer is 24 over 5 equals to x. That's all. Alright, this is a simple log question, but you, you must understand. If you couldn't understand, yeah, this question might be hard for you. Yeah. So first, first thing is, yeah, y x minus 1. This is not x minus 1. This is x power of negative 1. Because we know 1 over a equals to a power of negative 1. If 1 over a power of 3 is called a power of negative 3. This is simple of, this is the simple rule of indices. How to get, okay, how to get 5 power of negative 1? Okay, maybe I need to teach some basic about log. Okay, so have a look here. So, if we got log AB equals to C. So, I move the log A to that side. I will actually got a B equals to A power of C. This is what I say. The log base over here move to the other side, it will become number. And the number over here will become power. So therefore, if I move the log 5 to this side, my, this is negative 1, right? So negative 1 will become the power. And the 5 base here will become the base number here. Yes, this is how the log going to work. Yes, I hope I do answer your question. This, this one I agree no more with. <laughs> Alright, so if okay, Yes, this is how, how we do. Okay, just like give you more idea about what it is. Okay, let's say I got log 3a equals to 2. So a is just 3 power of 2. So a is equal to 9. Because you see, I throw the log base 3 to this side. The base 3 will become base number here. The 2 will become the power. Okay, I hope you got, you got it. How to chain base of log. Alright, let's say we, we need to chain base. Okay. Okay, let's see, we want to change base. Okay, let me just erase something. Yeah, because just to teach you some chain base thing. All right, let's say, yeah, the base is something like this. Okay, let's say I got log AB. I want to change to the base C. All right, it's very simple. First, you draw a line first, and then whatever, okay, let's say I want base Z. Log Z and log Z. Okay, the bigger value over here, I write on the top. The, small, the smaller number, which is base, I write at the bottom. Then the process done. This is how we change base. Okay, let's say today I want to change to log base 99. So I will write log 99 over log 99. And then the bigger number, I write at the top. Base number, I write at the bottom. Then the process done. Yes, you can change to whatever base you want. Yes, depend what base you want, you just write. It, do, it doesn't matter. But then normally we will, we will change to the base is related one. We will not, we will not uh, randomly change to something unrelevant. Right, I see some raised hand here. Yes, let me see. Yeah, I got some raised hand from Fang. Yeah, any question from Fang? If not, I'm going to move on. Because now question 8, we still got 17 questions. So if change, change from log 10x to log x. Yeah, you can... You can do that also. Yes, this is a very good question from a student here. Yeah, you can change this one. I mean this one. To log x1 minus log x x. Alright. And then you will got the same answer. Just now what I got, I got negative 1, isn't it? Okay, log x1, if 1 actually... 1 actually is x power of 0, right? x power of 0, I, I got 1. So this one will give me 0. Alright, this one minus log xx. Log xx is just 1, right? So you got negative 1 also. You can use this method if you want. But you got the same thing. You got negative 1. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> just let me explain further a bit for some students. Because, yeah. I just hope you can understand and do the exam tomorrow. Okay, this one I will become log x, x power of 0, minus log x is 1. So the 0 I move in front, become 0 minus 1. So 0 minus 1, I got negative 1. Alright, because this one is log x, x, x power of negative 1, right? I move the negative 1 in front, I got the negative 1 straight away. You can use both, but then this one you actually waste more time 
But you, if you understand this one, it's okay. We all both will give you the same answer. Right, I'm going to move on because a lot of questions we shouldn't waste too much time over here. If you can't finish, if you can't, still can't understand, please go and watch my log video. Uh, no, you, at least you need to show something, right? You cannot like smart enough to like straight away get it equal to negative one. Someone will give you three marks. At least you need to write two, two steps for him. All right, this is progression. Okay, so over here, given that the fourth term, so the fourth term over here, I write T4. Okay, and the sum of the first nine term, I write S9, is 14 and 162 respectively. So this is 14. This is 162. Alright. And then find the first term and the common difference. So since this is AP, so yeah, I know I need to find A and D. So I just substitute the formula. Hope you still remember the formula. Tn equals to A plus N minus 1D. Alright. Sn is equals to N over 2. And then 2A plus N minus 1D. Alright. I hope yeah, this formula you still remember. So this one, A a plus n minus 1 means 3d equals to 14. Maybe I say a equals to 14 minus 3d. Alright, this is simple, just a formula. And then this one, sn, right? So n is 9. So it'll be 9 over 2, bracket 2a plus n minus 1. n minus 1 is 9 minus 1, which is 8d. Or equals to 162. Alright, so I need to solve this one. 2a, a is this one, I substitute in 14 minus 3d. And then plus 8D. Yeah, where is my 9 over 2? I'm going to move to the other side. Become 162 multiple 2 over 9. Alright, I use calculator to do the work. 162 multiple, oops, 162 multiple 2 divided by 9. I've got 36. Alright, this one will give me 36. And then this is 28 minus 6D plus 8D. So basically this is 2D. 28 move to this side minus 28 minus 28 I will got 8 yeah D I will got 4 alright so I substitute in here oops so A will equals to 14 minus 3 4 which is 12 so A will equals to 2 done 3 mark it's very simple this one you just need to understand this is T4 this is S9 and then yeah the formula is is given in your formula list you just need to understand this is AP, so please use the AP formula because I got some student, he's like, use the GP formula to solve the AP question. You at impossible, you will got the right answer because they are, they are the two different things. Okay? Yeah, we will like continue until question 15, then we have a small break. Yeah, because I, I can understand maybe it's hard for some student to digest. But we have the limited time. I'm sorry for that. And I'm not sure why my PDF doesn't load here. Where's my question number 10? Okay, while waiting the question number 10, maybe we go to the question 11 first. I'm not sure why the question number 10 doesn't load. All right. Okay, what is this? Okay, this is, this is linear law. So linear law, we only have one formula, which is y equals to mx plus c. I always say y and x can be x. In this case, my y is just xy from the diagram. And my x is square root of x plus c. Alright, so what I need to do is I need to change this equation into this pattern I want. Alright, this is what I will always do. Alright, you all can see number 10. I'm the only one cannot see. Oh my god, because in my screen here is still loading. <laughs> I'm not sure why. Okay. Just okay, maybe some of you like cannot see same with me. Alright, let let's just continue is number eleven. Alright, so I try to change this equation into this pattern mean I must have xy equal to something square root of x plus c. Alright, so yes, yeah, so I trying to change this equation so I got y square root of x minus 5 square root over square root of x equals to negative 2 so in order to get x y maybe I multiple square root of x for every single one so this one I will got okay I will got square root of y a uh, y square root of x multiple square root of x this one multiple square root of x just left this one and this one is negative 2 square root of x 
Alright, square root of x multiple square root of x will give us x. So this one is called y x. Alright, so I'm going to throw the negative 5 to that side will become negative 2 square root of x plus 5. Okay, over here, do you see actually they are similar? I want x, y here. Okay, y, x and x, y is the same. I want square root of x here. I got a square root of x here. So I know my gradient equals to negative 2. And I know my y intercept equals to 5. Alright, so over here, what is my y intercept? It's p, isn't it? So p is equal to 5. I've done the first step. And then my gradient is equals to negative 2. So I know my gradient is negative 2. This is 5, right? So I know this coordinates over here is just called 0, 5. Okay, because y intercept is 5. Alright, so the gradient is simple. It's just q minus 5 over 4 minus 0. So, of course, I know my gradient just now. I've done it. My gradient is just negative 2. So, I'm going to substitute the negative 2 into my m. So, negative 2. So, 4 minus 0 is just 4. So, this is negative 8 equals to q minus 5. Yeah, so q will equals to negative 3. Done. Alright, so I can get the p and q easily and it gives us 3 mark. This is how we solve the linear law question. Always do the y equals to mx plus c and then substitute the y and x based on what you have in the diagram and then change the equation into the pattern you want. Then you do the comparison. So far so good. Uh, it's still not loading. Interesting. Yeah, maybe I try to open another file from this. Hope the next file is 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 yeah. Already added. Do you want to load again? Yes. Okay. I hope the second time we can see question number ten. Yeah, we saw this. Yes, I see the question number ten here. Let me zoom in again. Zoom in again. Yes. Good. Okay. All of you can see the number ten here. If anyone can't see the number ten, let me know. Why the square root of x? Blah, 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 blah. I, can't, I can't see the chat room. Okay, let me <laughs> have a look on this one. Okay, this is GP. It's given as GP. All right, he gives us the, the second term is 6. So I know T2 is equal to 6. All right, and then I know the, the difference between the fourth term and third term is 9 over, f 9 over 2. So, difference, so I know T4 minus T3 is equal to 9 over 2. Alright, I hope you still remember the Tn term for geometric coordinate is AR n minus 1, isn't it? So, the second term means AR 2 minus 1 equals to 6. So, AR will equal to 6. Maybe I a make A the subject equal to 6 over R. Alright, this is, I got this equation from, from this one. Okay, he tell me second term is 6. Okay, over here. Alright, then this one I do the same thing. Alright, so this one is AR. 4 minus 1 is 3. This one minus AR. 3 minus 1 is 2. Equals to 9 over 2. Alright, it's 9 over 2. Okay, so I factorize out AR square maybe. Yeah, or no need to factorize. Lah. Just don't do extra step over here. So I substitute the A into here. Lah. So I got 6 over R. So this one is R cubed. Minus 6 over R. This is R square equals to 9 over 2. So I simplify, this is square. So I've got 6r square. I simplify, minus 6r, uh, minus 9 over 2 equals 0. Obviously, we know this is something to do with quadratic, right? So we just multiply 2 for everything. 12r square minus 12r minus 9 equals to 0. Then I just factorize it carefully. So this one is, uh, I use 6r, 2r, 3 and 3 I minus and positive so r will equals to uh, negative 1 over 2 and this one r will equals to 3 over 2 all right so we got 2 r over here then I will need to check back what they want they will say something all terms in are positive right so that's mean I cannot have negative so since all turn is positive mean I cannot have negative, this answer will be rejected because it is not positive. So since R is this one, I can substitute back into this one. So A will equal to 6 over 
3 over 2. So simplify, I got 2, move on, A equals to 4. Alright, simple. A any questions so far? No, right?